Hey, it's Andy with IT Supplies. Today, we're gonna to talk about Epson's refillable bulk ink system for their 44 inch and 64 inch die sub printers. Putting fresh ink into your Epson die sub is a pretty straightforward and easy process. But even so, we see many customers making mistakes that are costing them hundreds of dollars in inks. Today, we're gonna to show you the correct way to refill your Epson die sub inks so that you squeeze every dollar out of your bulk ink bags. When Epson came out with their first die sub printer in 2013, one of the major features was the aggressive ink cost. Epson began selling their own original inks for less than the third party inks that had dominated the market. In order to achieve this price point, Epson designed a bulk ink bay that users would refill with disposable ink bags. This brought costs way down, but it also introduced the opportunity for user error. Today, we want to provide some best practices for refilling your Epson die sub printer with ink. When your IC Supplies tech installs your Epson die sub printer, there will be a bracket like this in front of the ink bay. The top of this bracket is 70 millimeters or 2.8 inches from the bottom of each ink tank. This bracket wasn't included on the older generation of Epson die sub printers, so your installing tech should have drawn a line with a Sharpie at this same 2.8 inch level. If you don't have that line on your ink tanks, please measure and draw that line for yourself right now. It's really important. Ink should only ever be refilled when an ink tank gets below the bracket or line that you've drawn. I'm going to say that again because that's the most important part of the video. Never pour ink in your ink tanks unless your ink levels have come down to this line or refill bracket. When you refill your ink, pour the entire bag into the tank. Never partially refill your inks. The whole bag needs to be poured into the ink bay. The bag that you just poured into the printer should have a little chip taped to it. You slide that chip into its slot and you click it into place. That chip tells the printer that you just put a brand new bag of ink in. It's going to tell the printer to start counting down until that ink has been used up. It's also going to tell the printer that you are using genuine Epson ink and not a third party ink. If you pour ink into the printer but you don't replace the chip, then the printer has no way of knowing that new ink was added. You may think we're making a lot of fuss about a very easy process, and that's true. But you would be surprised how often this gets screwed up. We've seen this story play out a lot of times. If you don't fill up the tanks with a full bag of ink when it's below the marked line, then you will inevitably end up with a mismatch between the amount of ink the printer thinks is in the tank and the amount of ink that is actually in the tank. Before long, the printer will stop printing and require a new chip be inserted because it doesn't know that you've been topping it off the whole time. So when the printer demands a new chip, what do you do? You have to go and steal one off of a new bag of ink and put the chip into the printer. But that $115 bag of ink doesn't have a chip now and can't be registered for use in the printer. You might as well throw it away. If you do the refill process incorrectly, you will start creating hundreds of dollars in orphan bags of ink that can't be used. So while this is a simple process, we thought it was worthwhile to review so that you aren't wasting money on bags of ink that can't be used. Remember, one, only refill the inks when they are below the marked line. Two, always fill with the entire bag. And three, always put in a new chip when a new bag is poured in. If you follow these easy steps, you won't unnecessarily waste any precious drops of your ink when you're using your Epson die sub printer. If you found this video helpful, give us a like and subscribe to the channel. If you need a new die sub printer, we'd love for you to buy it from IT Supplies. This type of training and more is part of our on-site install process. If you have any questions, please reach us at itsupplies.com or in the comments below. Thanks.